Well, I, for years, have always heard tales of Tony's wonderful eureka moments in his scientific career. But what many people might not know is that Tony was always, so to speak, on, always the alert and thoughtful observer. And in retirement years, Tony and I got to spend a lot of time in the snow. And one sunny winter day at our getaway in Tahoe, he came to me and said with a big grin, solitons, just that one word. Then he walked me outside to show me the pattern of melting snow flowing down the driveway just outside. Last week, as I was finding my way through the files on Tony's computer, I came across his copy of this photo of our Tahoe place. Tony had named the image Soliton Research Facility, our Tahoe getaway. I knew Tony had a lot of friends and admirers. I had no idea that people from so long ago and so far away remembered Tony with so much affection. I have been truly affected by the response to this. And Tony, being such an organized person, had of course made some plans for end of life, but he'd never said anything one way or the other about having any kind of memorial. And at first I thought, oh, this is too much, this is over the top. Tony would be disturbed at people taking so much time and traveling so far. And then I realized that it's not the case at all because this is nominally about remembering Tony, this event. But beyond that, it is an opportunity for wonderful people that Tony has known to spend a little time with each other. And Tony would like that very much. And I know that he would hope that those who haven't seen each other for a long time would seek each other out and enjoy catching up on the science and on the rest of their lives. The last picture of Tony at the um, SPRC banquet four days before Tony's accident. And you can see uh, the vitality, the sparkle in his eyes. It's a nice picture, even without knowing the, the bittersweet part of it. It's a jewel.